welcome back, welcome back. We are back, everybody. We are back. And welcome to the third episode in our Pinot Azura Let's Talk Chip. <laughs> and in today's episode, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be talking all about the food and dining options on board Pinot Azura. Food. But before we get into the video, we're just going to kindly ask you to please consider subscribing to our channel. That way you'll miss out on any of our videos because we've got another two yet to come. Uh, so we don't need to miss out. So subscribe, that'd be good. And if you like the video, please give it a yeah, thumbs up. Give it a thumbs up. <laughs> and if you've got any questions or comments, pop them in the comment section below or pop over to our Facebook group. Oh yeah, yeah. So where do we begin? So as we're going to talk about dining, I think it's only fair to start off with the complimentary dining. So yes. that's the stuff that's included in your cruise fare. <laughs> So where do you want to start, Gav, if we're going to talk about that? So I think a good place to start is probably the main dining rooms. Yeah, cool, let's go. So Pino Azura has three main dining rooms, the Meridian and the Peninsula, which are your freedom dining yeah. uh, dining rooms. In those dining rooms, you turn up for dinner in the evening, anytime between six and nine. Uh, you request a table, so say you want a table for two. If they can accommodate you, they will. If not, you'll get one of those little pages. Yeah, and then you can go off and get yourself some pranks and then come back when your buzzer goes off and have your dinner. Pinot Azura also has set dining, um, a 6.30 and an 8.30 sit-in, yeah. and they're in the Oriental restaurant. And when we say set dining, that means the same table every night, with the same waiter every night, sat with the same people every night. That's fixed. You just, that's, it is what it is. But that's the Oriental <laughs> restaurant. That's say. the Oriental restaurant. Okay. Um, the restaurants offer breakfast, yeah. uh, lunch and dinner. What we'd suggest is you check the horizon because it has all the times in there. Yeah. What and, restaurants and sea where. days are different, port days, yada yeah. yada, that kind of thing. Exactly. Yeah. So we had some really good food in the main dining room. Got to say, we were really satisfied with it. It came out hot. It was tasty. Um, it was well presented. We had really good service. We had as well, really, we? really good service. In fact, we had such good service. We even requested one of the uh, the waiters every time I went there, yes. <laughs> praise them and his assistant Mohammed, because they were awesome. I'm sure we mentioned them last week in our other episode. And they gave us like little jokes on cards, little yep. riddles and things to do. But no, honestly, other than that, they were actually, all of them, you can't fault any of the staff down there, they were all fantastic. The if you, brilliant. If you are freedom dining um, and you do like your waiters, request it when yeah. you uh, check in. And if they can accommodate it, they will. Yeah. If, it, if they're already serving other people on their table or sections full, they'll just tell you either you have to wait or can you... Um, are you happy to go somewhere else? Yeah. So, for those of you who are experienced cruisers or have experienced P&O's uh, main dining rooms in the past, we're going to draw your attention to a few new things or a few mm. changes to the whole the whole setup. So, unfortunately, there was no longer an afternoon tea offered at the main dining room. That's finished. That's gone. That was now only available up at the buffet. Yes. Um, or the retreat, but obviously you're paying for that. <laughs> but so it's basically like a, a self-serve sort of setup yeah. in the buffet. Grab your sandwiches, your cakes. It's up to you. But so, there's no longer a, like a proper afternoon tea. That that's that's gone. Unfortunately, so disappointing though. Isn't it, it was really? a little bit because we used to like that. Um, secondly, this is very new. We haven't seen this before. We've seen it on other cruise lines, but it's a first on P&O for us. They're now offering you an, an enhanced uh, menu yes. in the main dining room. So it's slightly amplified over the main, what well, they're the main offering basically. And you do have to pay for this. Now this is a sort of, you can either go for like just a starter or a pudding or a menu. You can pick a course if you want, or they do like a full set menu. Yes. Now the set menu will cost you fourteen ninety five. Uh, starters three ninety five. Um, the mains ten ninety five, and the desserts are two ninety five. Um, I actually give it a go. I thought, well, I'm on holiday, why not? And something caught my eye on the menu, <laughs> and that was a dressed lobster um, claw. Yeah, and dressed lobster claw, and I think you had crab in there as well. Okay. So basically, I, I fancy this, and I thought, let's give it a go for purposes of research. So I, I opted for this. This. This additional charge plate it was only like i said 395 um but it was really really tasty really nice and i i think because it was on the elevated menu it came out in like on like a blue a posh blue <laughs> glaze sort of plate didn't it yeah so it was clearly distinct from the normal the plain or white sort of dishes <laughs> and as we say we've seen this on other cruise lines at like msc yeah. royal caribbean I think celebrity do it as well but it's new to pnl yes it's the first time we've experienced it there but if there's any recommendation from the dish I had or the, the course I had, I would recommend, if you fancy it, give it a go. 3 95 wasn't really a lot of money for what I had. I thought it was great value for money. Another thing to know, it's a bit of a bugbear with me as well with the main dining room. Unfortunately, um, they used to always on the menu have an always available section. And on that, you always managed to find something like chicken or salmon or steak, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, there may have been other dishes, but off the top of my head, I definitely know there was salmon and steak. They went on the menu, um, 
anymore and I, I can't say I asked for it. You did ask for, they used to do um, a port infused cheese. Yeah, still do. You did ask for that, but that. they don't no longer do that. But I didn't ask about this, but I, it was a shame to not see it because the always available steak and, and salmon was nice. Cause I used to mix and match and do surf and turf. So I was a little bit disappointed that wasn't there. Um, yeah, it was a bit of a shame really. Yeah. You know, if, if you've if you've asked for it and had it, let us know in the comments yeah. as well, because that'd be handy to know yeah, for next, next time. Yeah, because I will ask, because because I used to. Yeah, it's it's a shame, but never mind, never mind. <laughs> so that covers our main dining rooms. So where are we going to go next? So in addition to the main dining rooms, uh, the next complimentary restaurant is up on deck fifteen, and that is the self service or buffet mm. restaurant known on Azura as the Venezia and the Verona restaurants. Basically, the same restaurant. It covers the top half of the ship. Um, it's just divided into little sections, basically. So we'll we'll begin with the Venezia. That's the front forward end. It has sort of two counters backed onto each other in the middle. Um, they, they they offer the same food. They just backed on and and, and they they serve either side of the the restaurant, basically. Um, then further afterwards, then you have the Verona restaurant. That we mostly saw it served um, breakfast. But then by evening, the starboard aft half of it becomes the beach house. So they basically cook the beach house food in there. Yes. But talking about the food now, what we're going to say about the food. The food I found to be acceptable. I thought it was really quite tasty. I, I managed to find something every time I went in there. I never really struggled to make a meal. Um, you enjoyed your was, roasts? Mm. I, I did enjoy I was on a bit of a health kick. So I, <laughs> I was on mashed potato a lot of the first week. So I was quite happy to have that. There was a carvery there, which was great. They offered loads of little things. There was always things like prawns, um, salmon, chicken, all sorts of salads, coleslaw, coronation chicken. There was a bit of everything. There was something there for everybody. Um, I, I was quite happy with the carvery as well. I think I said that, didn't I? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I just yeah, I can see it in my head now, the guy carving me, and I was like, oh, I loved it. Um, also, in addition to this, um, they did have like themed evenings. Yeah. Twice for definite, we did see a Chinese style buffet and an Indian style buffet. I've got yeah. to say, the Indian buffet was by far my favourite. I absolutely thought that was, that was brilliant. Well, I walked through the first time I saw it and I was like, wow, I don't want to miss this. But I did because we had, a, I think we had a dining on yeah, that we night. Yeah, we booked something that night. Then I asked the staff, the, that second part of the cruise, and they were like, oh no, we need to do it every 10 days. I thought, oh no, I'm <laughs> going to miss it. I'm going to miss it. I was so happy and so pleased to find on the last night of the cruise, they had the Indian buffet. And was, you know it's oh, good man. when there's loads of officers there. Yeah, going, and when know. the staff are popping in and yeah. the staff as well. So yes, the Indian buffet was, do not miss that. If you have that at the buffet on your cruise, go to it. It's awesome. I think it's quite a well-known thing on Pino. Yeah. If, if they've got an Indian buffet on... Pino uh, do know how to make good. a bloody good curry. But yes, the food was really, really nice. I enjoyed it. And yes. you... I, I, wasn't, so I wasn't hugely fussed on the buffet, to be honest. It's yeah. probably one of the cruises we've dining at the buffet the most yes um but i think yeah we give it a good run for yeah. its money we really did but i i think for, for myself the selection is quite limited okay. um, and repetitive for me um but you enjoyed it i, I always did. found something I, might, I managed to make a meal it might have been a bit yeah. of like you know a pasta roast dinner um and I a think salad this is his problem all in one plate <laughs> i got there and plate myself up like a sort of meal that would work so like mashed potato gravy chicken maybe some veg you will go up there and you will put coleslaw with gravy, with curry, with something yeah. else. Yours is more like a culinary sort of car crash, whereas mine's like a proper meal. And yes. then I will go back if I fancy something else and get a different separate plate. But, but I think... it, it couldn't have been that bad either because it was always quite busy. It was always well. busy. Um, and we did actually, as we said, we had the several evenings during this cruise. Yeah. Yeah, it was, we, were, we were quite pleased with it. It was, it was nice. What we'll say is when you come up to the buffet, um, there'll be signs telling you which section the buffet's open. So yeah. follow those signs and then you'll get straight to that section. But if it's quite busy in that area to find seats, head towards the after yeah, ship the or the quieter Yeah, always is. quieter, definitely. <laughs> on to my next place, which I think is one of my favourites, was the poolside grill. So again, this falls under the complimentary category. Yes. <laughs> so this is on deck 15 at the Coral Pool, I believe, is it? Uh, yes, the yes. Coral Pool. Um, so here you can find your burgers, your hot dogs, and your southern fried chicken. The chicken was really, really good. Yeah, we came here quite often just to grab a you know, cheeky burger with some fries yeah. and coleslaw. Um, 
yeah, it was, it was good. I, I quite enjoyed this. I always like those kind of vinegar bars just to grab something quick. Yeah, no, it was really, really tasty. The food was good. And it's nice because you're by the pool, you can hear the music, yeah. you can see the people. Yeah, it's just lovely to be outdoors. It's really casual sort of dining. Um, one thing I will say, which was really good, is on the first week, as I said to you before, I was on a bit of a health kick. So I was avoiding bread because I didn't want to bloat. So when I was going to the counter, I was asking for the southern fried chicken yeah. um, without the bread. <laughs> Cutting some calories out, people. Um, and they were happy to give me extra chicken because yeah, in place of the bread. So, so, you know, they were, they were very accommodating. They would try and, and, yeah, accommodate you best they could. Yeah, no, that was, that was one of my favourite places, I think. Okay, so next up, between the poolside grill and there was the coral pool bar, I believe it's called, in the middle of those two, there's, or there was, what is still on the deck plan listed as the grab and go counter. Now, back in the day, that used to be like a little sandwich counter. You could go there at various times throughout the day. I think breakfast, you used to be able to grab like a, a roll, yeah, a did, bacon yeah. roll or something. By day, they'd do like wraps, little pre-made like bento kind of boxes, like salads yeah, yeah, and yeah. stuff. And they little little nibbles and bites that were just yeah, that kind of normally sort of chilled stuff that you could just take away and have a little snack on. However, that is thinner, it's gone. We never saw it at all during our cruise. I, think the I haven't even seen storage. it. I haven't even seen it on, I think when we were on Arvia and stuff, we saw all the signage and stuff that it's set up for it, but it is not back. Since yeah. COVID, it has not come back. So I think Grab and Go, as it, as it is at the moment, is is extinct, it's gone, it's finished. <laughs> In fact, I can confirm when we were sat there having our beers and, and chicken, I happened to look at staff using the Grab and Go chillers as some means of storage yeah. for things they were using, you know, from behind the bar, like napkins and stuff. So yeah, that is unfortunately finished. However, on to a positive note, on the opposite end of the, of the pool area, you will find the pizzeria. It is tucked next to the ice cream counter, which is chargeable. The yes. ice cream counter is charged and the ice cream is pretty scoops. But yes, the pizzeria is complimentary. You get some yeah. nice tasty pizza. I gotta be honest though, I was so good. I didn't have any pizza, but what about you? Did you, you had yeah, pizza? Yeah, a couple of slices, didn't yeah, I? Yeah. You, know, you have to try it, you know, it's all, all experimenting. But you're on holiday. research. But I wanted to fit into my clothes, so I'm sorry, I'm being a bit of a killjoy. I was being healthy, people. <laughs> but, yeah, they had their pepperoni pizza, they had their margarita pizzas. I had a slice of each one, and it was, it was very nice. Very good. So next up, I uh, will briefly talk about room service as well. Oh, yeah, because... I, almost, I almost forgot about this because there's a bit of a... Yes. So room service on Azura for breakfast is complimentary. Yes. It is only continental, so you're talking um, your cheeses, your meats, your cereals. Um, I think that's about it. There's no, yeah. there's no um, hot breakfast. There's no teas and coffees um, because you have tea and coffee making facilities in your room. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you can get a continental breakfast uh, free of charge on room service if you wish. Yeah. The rest of the room service is all chargeable. chargeable. But we just thought we'd sneak that a little bit in, yes. didn't you? Because I did nearly forget about it. I'm so, I'm so glad you've mentioned that, actually. Oh, it might be worth noting if you get yourself a coffee down at uh, Java, the cakes are complimentary. Yes, yeah, so while you pay so for the coffee. The coffee is chargeable, <laughs> but the cakes are free, just yes. make sure you ask for them. But I think that is pretty much it now. Yeah, I can't think of anything else now. But you don't need to spend the money um, to enjoy any of the meals on board. Like, like we've covered in this one, yeah. we've got the main dining rooms, you've yeah. got the poolside grill, you've got they the They were all really tasty, well presented, didn't have a problem with any yes. of it really. You, yeah, I think I think it was fine. So if, you do, if you're going on this cruise and you don't want to spend any more, don't feel obligated exactly. to because you will enjoy it anyway. Yes. So now we've covered complimentary dining, let's talk about a chargeable or specialty dining. Yeah. <laughs> so where are we going to start off on this one? I think we'll start on deck seven at the Glass House. Now the Glass House is a firm favourite of ours, we do really enjoy the Glass House. This is headed up by Ollie Smith, who you would have seen off the telly. And here you can pair your wines with your food. We always love to go there for a tipple. We love the wines. We love doing a uh, little wine tasting. And that's something, you know, we'll, we'll go into more when we talk about the bars. But on this occasion, we're just going to be discussing the food aspect of it. Now, the food is great. Yes. We really do enjoy the food. It goes well with the wines, as we've said. Um, so what we mostly went for when we were there, in fact, we were at quite a lot of them. We were there quite often. With these three plates, which you can go for, and they do like a three plate selection and it comes to 6 95 Again, this is, we're now going into the chargeable dining. Um, you can have proper meals there in the evening. Yeah. You can have things like serve and tear, which is what I had. 
Fish and um, chips, you can have scooters. puddings, you can have sliders, you can have, there's, there's something there for everybody. It's really, really nice, good quality, tasty food. It mm. is fantastic. Got to say we enjoy it. So I think the meal setup is pay by plate. Yes. So it's from 375 for starters. It's from eight pounds for your main courses and desserts start at four pounds 50, yeah. which I think is really quite reasonable. But as I said, we kept going there more for the three plates because when you're drinking the wine and you're enjoying the atmosphere and chatting, it's nice to have these little nibbles that come up. Now, some of our firm favorites within <laughs> these three plate selections, what we mostly went for were the tempura king prawns. They mm. were gorgeous. We also really loved the sticky oxtail bonbons. Yeah. They were delicious. I also really liked the salmon scotch eggs. They were delicious. Mm. They used to do quail scotch eggs. Unfortunately, they finished now. But instead of having the two little ones, you get one big one, one, big one which yeah. is nice. That, that is really nice. So I highly recommend trying the salmon scotch egg. Um, they also do little garlic scallops. Yeah, they were lovely. Um, yeah, and, and then as I said, for meals, we had things like uh, surf and turf, which was delicious. And you went for, what did you go for? I went for fish and chips. Fish and chips was right. so that was gorgeous. the main meal. But yeah, there's little plates, people. You have to try them. As I said, it's not really breaking the bank, is it's 6 95 So if you're there, you're passing the glass out, you feel a little smidge peckish, go get yourself a glass of wine and get yourself some three plates. It's ideal after an excursion, it's isn't it? Yeah, that is one of the, that is the perfect time we did. That's when we mostly did yeah. it, I think. <laughs> on, a, on a lazy, relaxy day afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> so who are you going to next then, Gav? Um, so now going to another favourite of ours, which is Sindhu, also mm. found on Deck 7. Yes. So I think P&O call this Asian fusion cuisine. Yes. Um, it's like, it's sort of, in our, we would just call it an Indian, basically. Yes, in our, we in, in, yeah, our, our language. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's a typical um, Sindhu that you find on any P&O cruise ship. Yeah. Um, you pay £10 to make a reservation. That £10 then comes off your bill. So it's, again, a bit like the glass house where you pay per plate. Mm. So you've got starters from around £5, mains again from about £8, and desserts yeah. for about £4. So if you just want a main so and a starter, you, yeah. you can. You don't have to have all three courses. Um, and if your bill says, say, so, it comes so, yeah. to £15, you already paid £10, so just on the night it's just £5. Yeah. Um, we went there just the once on this occasion. Yes. Um, and I think it was like uh, with the beef flatbreads. I, I think. remember having duck in yeah. some description. I had the signature Sindhu plate, which yes. comes with a selection of little cans. And I also had, for my pudding, I had like some, I can't remember what it was now. It was like a, I think it was like some sort of a pie. I think you had an off pie or something oh, like yeah, that. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you know, it's been a lot of sleep, so we've eaten a lot and drank a lot since this time. So, you know, trying to recall, and there's a lot of dishes to remember on this cruise. But, but yeah. we really do recommend Sindhu. It's, it's a mm. lovely little restaurant as well. You know, you've got a little bar there, so you can have a few drinks before your meal. Yeah, sit down and enjoy I think we always, we always go to Sindhu at least once during a cruise on yes. any P&O cruise, don't we? Same as Glass House and things like that. We always call in there at least once because we like to try it all out, yeah. don't we? Um, so next then, I think we're going to head to one of my other favourites. Now this is, this <laughs> never used to be a favourite of ours, but it's very, very quickly and recently become right up top. Yeah. I really do enjoy the Beach House. Now the Beach House, as I said to you earlier, it, by day, it's not. It's nothing. It's not. It's the buffet. In the evening, they close off the aft starboard section, and that gets converted to the beach house restaurant. And it's not like a buffet. It's proper sit down. Tables are set. It's got lovely ambience up there. And this, the food up here, I think it's like a comfort kind of food. They they, they describe it. As. Yeah. But it's really relaxed. It's really nice. Um. So really South American kind of flavors. Yeah. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think what what it actually is. So yeah. So. For instance, you have a lot of like your nachos and tacos yeah. and things like that are on the menu. Uh, they like to do a lot of these hanging um, kebab style foods, don't they? Some, like seafood some, things. Some spicy food on the menu as well, if you like yeah. spicy stuff. My favourite, and I've got to say, I've had I had this, oh God, I think in the last couple of Pinot Cruises, I've had it every time, but it's so nice. They do like this, I think it's either lava rock or salt rock. Um, it's like a steak comes yeah. out on this rock and it's hot and the the meat is steaming and sizzling in front of your eyes and you can cut it up and cook it how you like it you can take it off the plate cut it into little bits just heat up little bits as you go along which i really like because it's all hot fresh it smells amazing the quality of the food up there is just fantastic we also on this uh, cruise on azura which i haven't seen on the other ships uh, they did this i can't remember the name of the cocktail it was called a bear i want to say bedit Bendita, 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 or something like that, wasn't it? Very nice. Absolutely beautiful. It was sort of a cross between a pina colada and a strawberry daiquiri, but it wasn't, I don't think it was pineapple, it was more like passion 
fruit. It had a bit of a different twist, but it was sweet, delicious, and it went so well with that food. <laughs> oh my God. But yes, the food at the beach house was brilliant. So the beach house, um, you pay £9.50 cover charge to go in. And again, most of the food is included within that. However, things that I mentioned, such as the steak, come at an additional cost. So I believe that was an additional £7 on top of that. I also went for, at one point, I believe, a, um, it was like a starter. It was a, oh, what was it, was it? Halibut? Um, Halibut and salmon ceviche. Ceviche, yes, Something and that like was that. extra. Again, it was a small supplement on top of the actual cover charge. I, I thought, for, to be honest, the food was, was such good quality that I I can't rate it enough. And I would, I, you know, I, I'm happy to pay that for it because yeah. it was lovely. <laughs> it all, to be fair, every meal we had, even the ones we didn't pay extra for on top of that, yeah. were, were standing really. I, yeah. I remember having chicken wings and uh, with those marshmallow shares. Oh, the marshmallow with the chocolate and, and the churri Cheerios and the chocolate dip. And then that rum glazed pineapple, I think, or something Ooh, as well. Oh, yeah, I had that on the, la the last time I was there. But that starter, oh, God, I can still, I could, I could do with that now. That starter was delicious. I think next the Pinot steak. Cruise we're going on, first night, we're definitely going back to the beach house. Yeah, I think that's, conf I think that is, that's definitely, yeah, I'm game for that. I'm going to hold him to that. I'm going to write that down somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> so we're off to next, then. Um, so next one is on deck 17, Ooh, and it is the Epicurean. Ooh, yes, yes. When you were saying 17, I was thinking, I know where he's going, I yep. know where he's off to. So the Epicurean um, is... It's kind of like this, how would you say, it's like their sophisticated, yes. sort of like, it's their more elegant dining venue. It's P&O's probably, P&O's top of the top dining yeah, experience it's, it's, it's you a... can have is, is the Epicurean. It's very sophisticated, very tastefully decorated, yeah. nice surroundings, isn't it? It's definitely the, the, the top mm. um, end of their... Uh... The food is extremely... Fancy, yes. is what I would say. Yes. It's like, yeah. <laughs> so I would say it's, it is their sophisticated restaurant. It's yes. P&O's the fine, their, their finest restaurant. So the charge here is £30 per person. Um, and that covers um, your uh, starters, your mains yeah. and your desserts. And there's usually a complimentary little uh, chef's taster at the start as well. Um, so here you'll find things like steak. Um, I think I had uh, sold and I... Um, all, you know, high-end food. And it, we yeah. had really good service there as well, didn't it's we? It's really good quality food. I mean, I remember I go in for this um, starter and I was really super impressed with it. Gavin was grossed out by it because he's like that, people. I went no. for this octopus um, tentacle and it was... No, it was nice. I remember it was, it was on the top of the... It wasn't actually an octopus cock... It, well, it was it was listed on, obviously, when it was thing, but it was like a prawn cocktail, wasn't yeah. it? With the octopus on the top. You enjoyed but it. It was really, really tasty. <laughs> Gavin was not not happy. But, I mean, yours... I and think I'd... I'd you had um, salmon. Yeah, I'd cured salmon from and the they starter. Actually, you know, as we were saying, it's quite a sophisticated yeah. affair. So they were carving that all on the table yeah. or at the table, weren't they? Yes, and I had um, a sole for my main, again, which was prepared at the table. Yeah. Um, and you had the beef fillet. I had like an ox, ox cheek. Yeah, you? beef, yeah, an ox cheek. And I was like, that was really, really tasty as well. And, like, we had some really nice food. And then yeah. we both finished it off with, um, what did we have for, we had a cheese plate. Cheese, yes. Yeah. Washed down with some port, of course. Yes, of course. <laughs> but no, it was a very good experience. Yeah. Um, I think you preferred this experience over the one we had on Iona in the summer. I think Epicurean can be a bit hit and miss for me. I think the mistake made on Iona was that I expected a, um, it was a Norwegian taster menu, so it was a set menu, and I was, for some reason, with all the salmon farms, you're sailing out of the fjords, I expected it to be a nice big hank of salmon, and that wasn't, that wasn't there. <laughs> but um, you, know, you only find but, those kind of um, this, taste menus on Iona as well. Yeah, but this was absolutely delicious, really enjoyed as, it. As well as dinner in the Epicurean, you can also um, book afternoon tea in there. Oh yeah, I nearly forgot about that, yeah. yeah. So this is £17.50 per person. Yeah. Um, it's served on sea days only, I believe. Okay. We yeah. didn't do it this time, we've done it previously. Yeah. And yeah, it's it's just a bit of a special afternoon tea, yeah, isn't it? It's very whimsical, very fancy, isn't it? Yes. It's almost like Alice in Wonderlandy kind of vibe. Because Slightly, it's like yeah. funny little things like um pipettes with um sauces in that you squirt out as you take out of yeah. yeah. It's not your traditional afternoon <laughs> it's not, tea. It's no, a bit so different. don't go expecting, you know, a platter with sandwiches on it and some scones. It's like very a very fancy afternoon yes. tea, isn't it? We did speak to somebody who'd been there and they, they they'd enjoyed it that day. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's not something we try this time, but if you fancy something this special on the yeah. sea day. Or just like a birthday to... or something like that, it'd be nice. Next up, last but by no means least, although we didn't actually have any of this or experience this. <laughs> we were slimming. <laughs> no. Next up, we have uh, Sunday's ice cream counter, which is located up by the Coral Pool. We did 
briefly touch into this earlier on, um, right next door to the pizzeria. Yeah. This is not complimentary, it is chargeable. You charge, I can't remember how, what do they do, charge per scoop? Yeah, you charge per scoop and yeah. um, they, they'll also have ice creams there. There's a lot of a variety there yeah. um, from what I, what I did manage to see, but I just didn't go for any, any myself. Did you? No, no I, I didn't this time. I'm surprised I, I, I you didn't because he normally always has an ice cream, but you didn't, we yeah. didn't. So we can't give you any feedback on that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm afraid. What but, we'll also uh, say is, well, some of the bars <clears throat> do serve ice cream, so they'll have a little freezer section where you can get ice creams from the bar yeah. as well. Yeah, so I think, I think we've pretty much covered everything, people. Oh, there is one we haven't. Oh, yes. Yes, room our service. late night room service. <laughs> <clears throat> so this, I'm glad you mentioned this, because this does fall under the chargeable yes. category, so because as, it's as, not free. So as we said earlier, room service is complimentary for uh, your content <clears throat> and breakfast. Yeah. There are all other times there is a charge. Um, it's charge per plate. Uh, we had, I think we had a burger on there, a pinot burger. Yes, we did, We'd yeah. have like a, a beef baguette and things like that. Yeah. Um, and it, yeah, you just ring it up day or night, basically. Yeah. We'd, we'd come back quite late at night, the buffet would have closed, so we'd ring room service. I've got to be honest, though, what used to happen to me was we, he'd ring the food and we'd wait for the food to come, but I'd fall asleep by the time the food had come. But I have to, the food was actually <laughs> quite quick on this cruise. It didn't yeah. have to take that long either. No, it was just me falling asleep fast is what it was. I had too many of the drinks. So I believe that concludes this episode of Let's Talk Ship. I hope we've not missed anything because that annoys <laughs> me when I've missed something. Um, if we have, let us know in the comments below. Um, but yeah, this concludes all the dining options on board Pinot Azura. Yeah. Um, it was food was lovely, tasty, no complaints with it really. Um, if yeah, you've got any questions, great. like we said, pop them in the comments below, yeah. or you can head over to our Facebook group or drop us a message on any of our yeah. social media channels. So next week we are going to be talking about all of the bars and the entertainment on board. Yes. So if you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe to our please. channel because that way you won't miss out. You'll know. And turn the little bell notification thing on. I, yeah. I always forget to say that, but apparently it goes makes, it goes ding, ding or something. <laughs> and it tells you that our video is out. Yeah. So if you don't want to miss out on another video, please subscribe. And if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a little thumbs up. That'd be awesome. Um, so yeah, until next week. Bye. Cheerio. Bye, people. <laughs> Thanks for watching.